Hello everybody, today I'm going to be discussing empirical formulas and how to find them. Empirical formulas are uh, really just a very simplified version of the molecular formula that we are trying to find for a molecule or a compound. Um, empirical literally means uh, based only on observation and measurement. So what happens is we find a scaled down version with the smallest subscripts possible on a formula. So like for example, let's say we had a molecule like ethanol, but we don't know what the subscripts are. So we are going to have carbons and let's just call the subscript X. And then we're going to have hydrogens and let's call that subscript Y. And then we're going to have oxygen and we're going to call that subscript Z. So now these X, Y, and Z are actually going to be filled in with actual integers eventually. But the question is, you know, what are they? And just from an experimental situation or, you know, from a homework problem or something in, in your case, how would you how would you find out what these values are? So uh, that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So the experimental situation that we're going to be discussing is the combustion of ethanol uh, applied with some heat and the products are going to be CO2 and water and so they're going to give us the grams that we started off with of ethanol and then the grams of CO2 and the grams of water and we can go ahead and use that uh, information to find uh, the empirical formula. So given this information, how are we going to find um, the empirical formula of ethanol to fill in this X, Y, and Z? Well, as you can see, um, there's just one molecule over here that contains, you know, all three elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But over here, the carbons are isolated in this molecule of CO2, and the hydrogens are isolated in this molecule of H2O. So knowing the grams that we have of CO2 and the grams of H2O, we can correlate that and solve over here for the empirical formula of ethanol. So this is how we're going to do that. We're going to start off with 22 grams of CO2. So we had 22.0 grams of CO2. Now, I'm going to put this on the bottom. So on the bottom, we need grams of CO2. Um, and of course, you know, grams per mole. So how many grams of CO2 are in one mole of CO2? This is what we're going to find from our periodic table. Here's carbon. It's uh, 12.01 grams per mole. And oxygen is just about 16 grams per mole. So, um, you know, CO2, we're going to have two oxygens, one carbon. So that'll be about 32 plus 12, which will be 44.01 grams of CO2 in one mole of CO2. So now I'm just going to continue down here on this line. So of course on the bottom, you know, what would be over here? I'm just going to draw this down here, but on the bottom, we're going to have moles of CO2. And on the top, we want moles of carbon. Now, when you look at this compound right here, how many carbons are in here? Well, if we were talking about oxygens, there's two of them, but carbons, there's just one because the subscript on carbon is one. So in one mole of CO2, we have one mole of carbon. And of course, from our favorite and handy dandy periodic table, in one mole of carbon, there is 12.01 grams of carbon. See, 12.01 grams. So now, this is great because we just take grams of CO2, cancels out with those grams of CO2, one mole of CO2 cancels out with this mole of CO2, this mole of carbon cancels out with that mole of carbon, and basically what you're left with is just multiplying 22 grams, one, one, 12.01 grams, and then dividing by 44.01. So when you multiply all this together, you end up with 6.00 grams of carbon. And again, the units come from right here, grams of carbon, because that's all that's left. So basically what we found out here is that in 22.0 grams of CO2 that were produced, 6.0 grams were just carbon. So the remaining 16 grams were related to the were oxygen basically oxygen molecules and so now we, we are going to be able to use this to relate it back but first we're going to do the same procedure for hydrogen because as you remember 
now we still have this other number that corresponds to uh, water. And so water is the only molecule on this side of the equation that contains hydrogen. And so therefore the hydrogen here must have been the same hydrogen that evolved into water over here. So we can use these 13.5 grams to find how much of these 13.5 grams is just hydrogen. So how are we going to do that? Just how we did it with the uh, carbons from the other one. So we're going to start out with 13.5 grams of H2O. And again, as always, on the bottom, grams of H2O. And how many grams of H2O are in one mole of H2O? Again, referencing back to our handy dandy periodic table. So here we have hydrogen, which is approximately one gram per mole, as you can see there in the center and uh, oxygen, which is approximately 16 grams per mole. So H2O, uh, 16 grams from the oxygen, plus two times one gram of hydrogen is gonna give us 18.02 um, grams of the H2O in one mole of H2O. Now, this would typically go here, but I'm just gonna continue down here on this line. So, as always, you know, moles of H2O is going to have to go on the bottom. And, um, and we want to find moles of hydrogen. In one mole of water, so for every one mole of water, we're going to have two moles of hydrogen. And the reason for that is, like I said, is because there's two hydrogens in this equation. So, two moles of hydrogen for one mole of water, because in one of these, there's two of these. Okay, and then again, thanks to our periodic table, in one mole of hydrogen, we have how much? 1.008 grams of hydrogen. So now again, with uh, canceling out our, our units that we no longer need, grams of H2O cancels out here, moles of H2O cancels out here, moles of hydrogen cancels out here, and then the units that we're going to be left with is grams of hydrogen. So we multiply all of this together, we get 13.5 times 1 times 2 times 1.008, and that's going to be divided by 18.02 times 1 times 1 on the bottom. So. So when you multiply all this out, you're going to get 1.51 grams of hydrogen. So, great. Now we've found how many grams of hydrogen correspond to the 13.5 grams of product that we started out with. And similarly, that there's 6 grams of carbon in the 22.0 grams of carbon dioxide that we started out with. So now we know that we had 11.5 grams of ethanol, which was CXHYOZ. And in this molecule, we know that we had 6 grams of 6.00 grams of carbon and 1.51 grams of hydrogen. So we know that, like I said, from the work that we have just done. So basically, if we want to find the mass of the oxygen, we just take the 11.5 grams that we started out with, subtract the 6.00 grams of carbon, subtract the 1.51 grams of hydrogen, and what we're left with is 4.00 grams. And again, this has to correspond to the oxygen because we already know how much of it is carbon and how much of it is hydrogen. So, so in the molecule that contained 11.5 grams of ethanol, 4.00 grams of it had to be oxygen. So now to find the empirical formula from this data. Again, 6.00 grams of carbon, 1.51 grams of hydrogen and 4.00 grams of oxygen.
and we want to find those. Now, we have expressed here all of the elements that we're looking for in grams, but the problem why you can't just stick those in is because grams, remember that all of these elements have different weights, like for example, carbon was 12 grams per mole, oxygen was 16, and hydrogen was just one. So, you know, one gram of hydrogen is not the same as one gram of carbon, you know, because they all weigh differently. So we're going to have to put them into units in which they're all equivalent, and of course that's going to be moles. So the way we do that is we're going to have six grams of carbon, and then in grams of carbon, how many moles of carbon? Well, 12.01. Remember from the periodic table that we looked up before. So we have that, and then we, you know, of course, grams of carbon cancel out. And so what we're left with when we divide six by 12.01 is approximately 0.5. Zero, zero moles of carbon. We're going to do the same procedure for hydrogen. 1.51 grams of hydrogen times one gram of hydrogen in one mole. So that's going to give us also 1.51 moles, well, round it, 1.50 moles of hydrogen. So let me just show you the cancel out units here. Bam. And then for oxygen, we had 4.00 grams of oxygen. And in one mole of oxygen, we have 16.0 grams of oxygen. So grams of oxygen cancels out. And what we're left is 4 over 16, which is approximately 0 0.25 moles of oxygen. So basically now you just stick those numbers into the formula. This corresponds to x. This corresponds to y. And this corresponds to z. So C of 0 0.5, H of 1.5, and oxygen of 0 0.25. Now, um, so this is, you know, you basically just stick those numbers in, but now we want these to be the smallest whole numbers. So um, the smallest subscript that's a whole number that oxygen could have would be 1, and we have to multiply 0 0.25 by 4 to do that. So we're going to multiply everything by 4 and um, times 4. So now what we're going to get is carbon and then 0 0.5 times 4 is 2. Hydrogen and then 1.5 times 4 is going to be 6. And then for oxygen, you know, of course, 0 0.25 times 4 is going to be 1. And there you have it. So this is the empirical formula of ethanol. And as a matter of fact, this just happens to be, you know, uh, one of those examples where the empirical formula is actually the same as the actual formula. And uh, let me just draw it really quick so you guys can see what it looks like. So that's what ethanol looks like, and as you can see, we have two carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens, and one oxygen. So there you have it, and that is the empirical formula of ethanol.